This is Melissa Furness, artist and professor, back at you with uh, some more fun with just seeing how far we can take using a very simple drawing element, graphite. So, fun fact about graphite, um, the cool thing is that, you know, certainly as a technique for drawing, the closest predecessor for a pencil was silver point, which is basically drawing with metal. And this was until the end of the 16th century, but that was when a large deposit of graphite that was discovered. Um, chemistry was still in its infancy at this time, um, but this, and so the substance was actually, you know, discovered and thought to be a form of lead. However, we know now that that was quite wrong. Um, and before graphite became so popular for, for being used as pencils, it was historically used to line molds for cannonballs and used in war. Um, it was called plumbago. Uh, back in the day, you know, graphite was quite a hot commodity. Another interesting fact about graphite is that uh, graphite and diamond are two forms of the same chemical element carbon. Um, and, and so, hey, you know, guess what? If you are a superhero, which is really interesting, with the strength of approximately 150,000 times the atmospheric pressure at the Earth's surface, you could totally turn your very ordinary drawing pencil into a diamond. So hey, DC Comics, how about you make the next superhero an artist? Diamond in the rough, maybe? Um, so, okay, time to get drawing, huh? <laughs> Before we begin, I just wanted to give you a little overview. First off, we'll just have a little bit of a chat about the different types of pencils and different grades and, and what kind of marks they make. Um, then we'll do a little demonstration on water-soluble graphite, which maybe some of you haven't used before. And then after that, we'll try it, uh, the acrylic method with matte medium and white acrylic paint. We'll go on to Pushing graphite around with something that might be a little bit more unusual for you, uh, turpenoid and white oil paint perhaps. And then we'll play around with powdered graphite. And then we'll try out what um, I might call like a graphite print and play around with using a little bit of printmaking techniques with extender base. Very exciting. So the first thing we're going to do is to prepare our surfaces get our materials ready to go. So I'm an artist who likes to kind of get at the paper a little bit more aggressively than maybe some other artists do. Um, I also like to mix unique media. And with some of these experiments that we're gonna do, we do need a stronger paper, or we need to give the paper something of a protection or a coat that will make sure that the like oil-based media that we might use won't eat at the fibers of the paper. You can see here that this is, you know, fairly flimsy, you know, sketch paper. So what you can see with this piece is that I've taped it down with masking tape. So I'm doing that with two sheets just to make sure I have plenty to work with. And I know that you know, you might think that you want to save your masking tape. Please don't. It's very important that you tape it down on all four edges so that um, when you apply the gesso to give it a coat, it will then re-stretch and, and dry flat again. And then you can grab your gesso brush, dip into your gesso, and give that you know a liberal coat of gesso what i normally do is to give it two coats at least that way i know i can you know make some pretty cool aggressive marks if i need to expressive marks and then i won't destroy the paper and i'll have a nice solid surface to work from so you can see from this painting that i'm doing here that the paper does buckle up when you get it wet. And so if I let it sit here and don't get impatient, if I leave it taped down, then I know that it will dry flat again for me. I'm gonna come back and do a second coat and then I will be good to go with my surfaces because for these processes, we're gonna use 
gesso paper and regular uh, drawing sketching paper. The other thing that I need that I don't have readily available is uh, powdered graphite. I do have a container of this in my studio, which I'm not able to get to right now. This is my home studio. So I'm going to see how I can make my own powdered graphite. I do happen to have this graphite stick. I have a really coarse piece of sandpaper. And I'm just going to rub on that and let the remains fall into this cup I have here. And this actually works really well. Hey, maybe I don't need to buy graphite powder anymore. I can just do this. And then when we get to doing the demos, I can show you some pretty cool stuff that you can also do with powdered graphite. A graphite pencil has mainly two powdery components in that dark substance surrounded by wood, graphite and clay. The more graphite it has, the softer and darker you can draw with it. The more clay that it has, the lighter and harder the pencil is. So graphite pencils come in a range from 9H, 8H, etc. and down to just H. It then moves into HB and then B, 2B, etc. towards 9B. 9B is the softest and darkest. 9H is the lightest and hardest graphite pencil. So a 6B is softer and darker than a 2B, and a, a, a 6H is harder and lighter than a 2H, and much harder and lighter than an HB or a B pencil. Sometimes you can find an F pencil, which is a slightly harder version of HB, meaning you can sharpen it to an even finer point. So there's no need to really have all these types of graphite pencils. Lots of artists work with three or so pencils of varying darkness and hardness. Usually these three are fairly close together in range. So I've been sorting through some stuff and found quite an array of pencils here. Um, it's true that artists find their own unique selection of pencils that work best for them. I love rich, dramatic blacks, and so this is what you see making up the bulk of my own collection. Um, it makes sense, you know, to choose pencils that are fairly close together in range, although perhaps not right next to each other to make sure that there's a sufficient difference between them. So if you want to create a light drawing instead of a dark one, um, in a high bright key, you will not need to get a deep, soft, and dark 9B pencil. In a bright drawing, your darkest shade will probably still be fairly light, so you might not need anything darker than an HB. If you want to draw a very dark, dramatic drawing like I prefer, there is no point, excuse the pun, in using an extremely hard and light pencil like an H. So the thin and fine line of an H pencil will just disappear against that brute darkness of a strong B pencil. So choose your pencils only one or two steps apart, an H, B, a 2B, and a 6B, for example, or a 4H, a 2H, and an HB. I myself go for something like a 2B, a 6B, and an ebony pencil. So for my first demo, I have my setup ready to go. I'm going to work with water-soluble graphite. You may not have used this before, but it's super great. Um, these pencils, I guess they call them Graphitone. So what I have here is a 4B medium wash and a 6B dark wash. I have my paintbrush, you know, way to sharpen my pencils. I've got sort of my miniature still life set up here and I can kind of see you show you how some of this is going to work. So this is the base of what I've mapped out with regards to working with this um, water-soluble graphite. Um, as soon Before I start uh, adding water to anything, you can see that I've taped down my paper. That is so that, you know, if it bubbles up when it gets wet, it will dry flat again for me. And so as I start to add water, you can see what will happen with the tones. It's really actually a lot of fun. I, I have mentioned before that I get a little bit impatient with drawing sometimes because the, you know, the 
the nature of drawing and that tool that you're using is that, you know, it's a small point that you're working with. And I like to be able to cover an area a little bit more swiftly or I suppose with a little bit more expressive or aggressive mark. And so being able to dip in and add water to a pencil mark really makes me much happier in terms of what I prefer to do. Um, and I'm able to get something down and something uh, finished a good bit more quickly. So this is what happens with, you know, that lighter wash. Again, I can use different size brushes too with my water if you really want it to go more quickly. And then the other thing that I can do is I do have a 6B pencil. Um, I enjoy actually drawing into paper that is already wet because then I can really define an edge very nicely and very crispy, crisply. And I can get a really, you know, rich, deep shadow as well if I want to. And create a nice, you know, strong mark. And then part of it will be a little bit more painterly looking and then other parts will be more like a drawing. I can really start to pay attention to some of those smaller details. So you might try these pencils out, get your paper damp, see how it feels to actually draw into a damp paper. As you can see there, that it was quite wet. It had a bit of pooling of water already on it. And I, I sometimes go back and forth, you know, between the brush and the pencil. Or, you know, if I really want to just straight away make a mark, I can grab my water here and just dip the tip of the pencil into the water and then draw a mark and you can see what happens. So I'm pretty happy with those, you know, general ending effects with that cup I was drawing. Now maybe I'm gonna try a couple, a few abstract things on the side, just to see what I can do with this medium. So this is the 4B pencil. You know, you can then maybe like see what happens when you drop you know, just some water on there. See what happens, you know, if you let some of it pull up or if you push some of it around, what else you can do with this medium. So you could see that I just drew in that area, but I'm able to really pull that graphite out and pull it to the side in different directions and see what else I can do with it. <clears throat> I mean, I encourage you to experiment, you know, see how far you can push those materials. You know, pull up a bit of water. How does that compare to other things around it? And I could even try perhaps like a spray bottle. So maybe I'll get this one like fairly dark. and spray it and let it sit for a minute and see what happens. So as I proceed with the rest of these demos with graphite, you will see me do more and more experimental techniques. We're just getting our feet wet here, ha ha, and seeing what we can do first with water-soluble graphite. For this next piece, I'm going to try something a little bit different. Um, 
I've stated before, obviously, as I'm a painter, I like to be able to push things around a little bit more swiftly than maybe just working with a pencil alone allows. So what I'm gonna do again is start a base of my little still life here, and then I'll add in um, just white acrylic paint and matte medium and see what else I can do to get that graphite to do something a little bit different, a little bit more unique. So this is <clears throat> a pretty solid base for what I got started. I did a build up from a gesture drawing in the H pencil. I defined a little bit more with a 2B and then some small details with the 6B so far. So now what I'm going to do is grab my titanium white as well as my matte medium, put it out here on my makeshift palette and see what I can do to push around that graphite a bit more. So this is the funner part where I get to have a good time with uh, my paintbrush and see what else this graphite will do for me. So I'm dipping into the matte medium a bit as I go and you can see how easily that graphite will move around with my paintbrush. So again, the nice thing is that I can get both drawing and painterly effects in one piece, which I really enjoy. It creates a unique quality to um, what I can do with the work and the values that I can pull out with that element that I'm drawing there. Helps to smooth out areas that maybe I don't like just like scribble lines being there or something that looks like a scribble line. I want to make sure that everyone sees, you know, that I'm drawing things very specifically from that element that I'm looking at and working on creating, you know, something beautiful. So this is just the matte medium so far by itself. I can switch brushes out too, but um, I thought I'd just like put some wet down here. It doesn't push like every bit of graphite around, but then I can um, grab like a, you know, a darker pencil or even a lighter one, but um, I can then draw into that paper that I just put the medium down on. And it's gonna allow me to get a, like a really nice, smooth, rich black line on an edge or in any area that I want it to be. Or it can also help me maybe define some values a little bit. I put the graphite down in that wet area, then maybe I can go back in with my paintbrush a little bit more and smooth it around or see what happens with that. So that's just with the matte medium. What I can also do is then add in some white acrylic paint, which is something that I enjoy. So I, I layer this as well. You see I'm kind of, I had matte medium down and I'm adding some more graphite on top so I can get a little bit more of a rich looking uh, value there. And now I have my white paint and I can add that back in. So there might be areas where, I don't know, maybe I got a little bit too dark and I want to lighten it back up again. I mean this cup has value all the way across it and I can also use that white to try and push the graphite around a little bit more as well. You know when you mix the graphite, you know when it's black um, it's softer and so it's a lot easier to move that particular bit of graphite around on the page versus something that might be a, like a harder pencil.
So you can take a look at this. This is a matte medium, and then I'm drawing into the wet medium, and this is just the straight paper. You see the difference in the way that the mark looks? The nice thing about drawing into that wet paper is you get that really crisp, clean line that I really enjoy. You can see how much the graphite will move around if I just put the medium in there. Draw with the side. This is a woodless pencil, which is really handy at times. So you can see how much the graphite will and will not pick up. You know, there's still the bit that has already soaked into the paper, but then you also have this nice hazy atmospheric quality that you can get by using that paintbrush to really push it. And again, this is a 9B woodless pencil, the softest, blackest pencil that you can get. If I were using something that were hard, I definitely wouldn't be able to do this kind of process. So I've got this acrylic to dry almost all the way. So you can see that even though the white is over that, you can still see those pencil marks underneath, which is kind of nice um, to see some of those. And then once that acrylic is dry, you can then go back and you know define edges that you weren't able to define as much before. And again, drawing on top of a gessoed paper is kind of nice as well, and I'll show you more what that's like in my next demonstration with graphite here in a second. But, you know, to finish this off, you know, again, think about your drawing in terms of layers, you know, you can keep building on it as you go. It's not just, you know, a one-off thing. Keep thinking about what other details you can add to it that might make it look more interesting, more complex. Ask yourself, what values did I miss? Or little bits of reflection that you can add maybe into the piece. And then pull it together to complete the work. So there you have, you know, a drawing line, gesso added on top, and then me kind of shading a bit or adding value on the side there to, you know, join it all together. And then I might also do that a little bit more on the interior part of the cup here. until I'm happy with, you know, the final look of it. It's not bad. And then, you know, I urge you also to take a, a look at some of the abstract areas, see what else you can do. Um, you know, it's kind of, see what kind of other types of marks that you yourself might be able to make with this. This next process involves using graphite with titanium white oil paint and just terpenoid solvent to push that graphite around. I've got it on top of a piece of paper, of drawing paper that has been coated with two coats of gesso. And let's see what happens. Okay, so I've got a bit of a base down on this piece. 
Um, I really actually like to, you know, draw on graphite uh, paper that has gesso on it uh, because it, the graphite does not soak into the surface. It sits on the top and I can do a whole lot with, you know, not much pressure with just pushing my graphite around. I mean, there is a bit of a texture from the paintbrush when I did the, the painting of the gesso on the paper, but I suppose if I had more time, I could be more particular and actually, you know, sand that down so that it wasn't visible so much. Um, but yeah, you can really push that around super easily. And what we're gonna do now is push it around even more with just our terpenoid solvent. So we'll start with that. And this is so fun and easy. Like you can get the richest black line just with adding some terpenoid. So I'm putting it down there in that shadow. And you can see how easily it dissolves and moves around. It is important that um, since you're working with something that's oil-based, a solvent, and oil oil painting, you do have to give make sure that you give that paper a coat of that gesso. You can also, you know, draw into that area that has the solvent. Um, you can use a dry brush and push it around even more, be a little bit more particular about certain areas, um, go into others, even without adding anything new and play around with maybe like how that shadow moves across. And then also, you know, the, the cup itself. So this is just the effect with only using terpenoid. But in a moment here, you know, I'm gonna add in that white oil paint, which is what I also like to do. It, it creates an effect that is really um, unique and something that you can't really get in other ways. So here's my white oil paint over here. You can see that it creates kind of a, a nice, cool, silvery looking gray that you just can't get with the acrylic. The um, acrylic white um, just really responds quite a bit differently. And I just think that it's quite beautiful to see that kind of cooler white come through and also have it to be a little bit of a smoother mark because I know it's gonna take a bit of time to dry, you know, as oil painting goes. So I have a little bit more time, you know, to be more particular about certain details and stuff at the edges, etc. highlights that I see going across the form, things like that. And, you know, I don't necessarily want it to be either like a, a full straight on painting. You know, I like the qualities of a drawing along with the painting. So here we have, you know, the reason we have a painting and drawing degree and not just painting and not just drawing, right? The two come together in lots of different ways. Okay, so I'll do some kind of more abstract stuff on the side. Look here, I'll just put solvent down, draw into it with my ebony pencil, and you can see how nice and smooth that mark can be versus if I were just drawing straight on the gessoed paper. And really, with that, I get the blackest black possible from that graphite, which I really enjoy. And then I can kind of play around with how it comes out from there. And see what happens with the white paint. Maybe if I just put white paint down and draw into it, it certainly is a 
a more of a gray effect. You can get that silver tone to come out. And try a little bit larger brush. You know, and this is just, you know, having a, a fun time playing around with expressive marks with really actually fairly limited amount of materials. So it's kind of freeing to be able to do this kind of stuff. And see what happens like when I value it on, put the value down on the side of the woodless pencil, for instance, you can see areas where it's dry versus where it's wet. And then I can come back in and do some different stuff with it. Create a sense of layering throughout there. On to my next process with graphite. And what I have here is that powdered graphite that I kind of shaved off with my um, sand, rough sandpaper and my graphite stick. And the cool thing about powdered graphite is that you can just like dip it into the powder and draw with it or paint with it just like you would almost in oil paint, but you get this kind of like, I don't know, sfumato look to it, like smoke or something. And it can be a lot of fun to play around with. So I've, I've, I'm, I'm a little tired of drawing the cup over and over again. So, hey, I'm gonna revert to something that's abstract. So that is just the powder graphite, you know, on its own. You can see that a little bit more clearly as I'm painting with it. I can imagine this being like, I don't know, something really beautiful. You see it kind of puff up even as I'm making marks with it. Really nice, soft quality, which I really enjoy. So the other thing you can do too is like, um, I can take, you know, one of my paint brushes that I was using with the acrylic and you know, put either like a matte medium or even, you know, just something wet down on the paper here. So here I'll just do like, I don't know, a stripe or something like that. So I can put it down and then I can take this powdered graphite and actually just like put it across that wet area and it will stick to it and create some really interesting marks. So if I lift that up, it's only gonna be in that striped area where I painted, but you know, if I painted like the whole thing, it might be really cool. I actually had a friend in graduate school who would uh, do this with large paintings where um, he wanted this really beautiful, velvety, rich black surface. So what you could do is essentially, you know, paint the entire surface. You might, I might suggest an oil paint so it doesn't dry too quickly. Um, and then take this powdered graphite, which you can get in larger containers, and, you know, just sort of dump it across that surface. And what we'll do, it will do is to create kind of a, a velvet quality to it. I guess I can lift this up a little bit so you can see how some areas will fall away and others not. See, I've, you've got the line of that um, acrylic that I put there. It's actually a lot of fun to play with. So I can imagine there's like an endless amount of things that you could do with this um, powdered graphite. So I, you know, challenge you to, hey, see what else you can do with it. Um, but hey, this is, you know, drawing with a paintbrush which is a lot of fun. Um, so I could like do some other kinds of marks and then, you know, again, throw this in there and see what else can happen. Or I could try it with, you know, like a dip some water in there. See that? I'm dripping some water. 
And again, you know, I could lift the paper or move it around a little bit to see what else that graphite will do and create some really interesting marks. Um, there's another artist as well that will put, um, I assume like ink or, I think it's ink, but you could also do it with powder graphite in like, um, you know, a bubble um, kind of solution. And you can use almost like a child's bubble, you know, thing to blow it and then have it pop it onto the paper and you'll get the effect of the pop in a little bit different way. Um, so the other thing I'm gonna try is maybe just like throw some of this over here. And then I have my spray bottle that, you know, it just has water, but I could have like solvent or even like a bit of matte medium in there and see what it does. You can see it's kind of creating an uh, explosion effect. There's also another artist who's um, Chinese, I believe, and he uh, uses gunpowder to make these drawings, which are really pretty cool. So this is the area up here where I was spraying with the sprayer, and then I put some acrylic underneath and move things around. And so you can see how that might dry. Um, in this case, you may need something more like a fixative um, to help you settle it into the paper um, and keep it on there. So that had some spray water on there and then I can powder this on to make some interesting effects. Or you can combine any, any of these processes for certain, you know, For my next very exciting process, I have set up a little area where I can do a bit of makeshift printmaking. I have a sheet of Duralar matte acetate, double-sided matte. I've taped it down to the table and that's going to be my area where I create my drawing. I have my brayer to roll out ink. This is a speedball block printing medium. It's an extender base for block printing. Um, which I'll use to help me create my prints. I also then have a spatula to roll it out, tape, this is a little kind of uh, just clear mylar to use as a pellet, and then my greasiest dark pencil, my 9B, and an eraser in case I need it. So I also have a stack of little sheets of paper to see how many prints I can get out of this. So I'm going to just trace the corners here so I have an idea of where to place the paper when I'm doing my printing. I also have a bone folder which is really helpful when you want to burnish and press that paper to create the print. The bone folder is also used with bookmaking. So first off I'm going to focus in this area and create a nice dark line uh, graphite drawing. Here you see a closer view of the drawing that I produced. Um, just decided to keep it fairly simple for this and um, just do a nice strong dark line. You can see here that I also wrote backwards. Printmakers have that amazing skill because keep in mind this is a print. It will print in reverse so we want to make sure that we can read text. So I'll get started now. I've got uh, my ink here squeeze some of that out. This is really just extender base, it's not actually ink. I can use my spatula here and get it started and then roll it out with my brayer and then put it across my drawing. Probably need to do it a couple times for this first one. I'll grab a sheet of paper, lay it down, and burnish. Um, you could also use a baron, which I, I don't have accessible with me right now, 
but this will work just as well, I think. So what I'm doing is encouraging that graphite, you know, to come out a little bit more by just kind of going over my drawing a second time because I'm finding um, once the mylar gets used to accepting that extender base I'm adding to it, that um, drawing is actually printing quite decently. So with experimental processes, as you know, you know, it's just playing around to see how well you can get that to work out for you. Maybe I'll add the, draw the shadow a little bit in there. Go back and, you know, add a little bit more of this extender base. Roll it out. Ink this up more with my extendo base. Grab a sheet of paper here. Lay it down and then use my bone folder to burnish. See how it looks. It's actually quite nice there, see? And that is really my third print. I've been pulling out the drawing. So this time we'll see what happens if I don't add any additional graphite. Just keep inking up with the extender base. The cool thing is that, you know, super easy way to get a multiple, right? And sometimes the effects are unique and interesting. Just giving it a good bit of pressure. And then you can also like test the side and if you're not happy with it, you can press with it more. So there's another print that I got out of that. So you can decide, you know, if you wanna draw into it with each print. Then I'll try and print a few more without doing that and see how far it goes. So here's my set of prints. I've got like seven prints. Here's my first over to my last there. Uh, and I, I'm really happy with how this turned out. So what I could do is if I wanted to print even more, I could continue to add more graphite and keep rolling it up and printing more and more. Super easy way to do some really basic printmaking. So here you have an overview of the different materials and methods that I went over. Hopefully you'll be inspired and want to try some of these out on your own. It's been great working with you all here today on pushing around some graphite. Um, we can get some really interesting effects, huh? Uh, I appreciate you working with me today and join me next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.